All right. Hello. How's everybody feeling today? Great. Second session, Gen 2020. It's been uh, five years since my last Gen. I went to San Diego, and I'm really glad to be back. And um, today, we're going to kind of go through a little bit of the strategy that I like to use, um, not only for myself, but also uh, I run a record label called Outside of Music, which is more than just a record label. It's also a media company. Uh, and we focus on building artist releases that are kind of a more 360 approach rather than just the kind of traditional, uh, here's a record, I worked on it for 18 months, throw it out into the world, uh, cross our fingers, hope and pray. So we try to move things uh, forward a little bit with some other approaches. So I'm going to try to get through all of my notes here in 20 minutes, and uh, we'll do our best to hope to save some time for Q&A uh, at the end or in the hallway uh, afterwards. I see some of my students out there in the hallway. What's up, guys? Um, so what is Create, Connect, Repeat? Well, Create, Connect, Repeat for me is kind of my mantra, I guess, uh, of what I tell artists, what I tell students, which is uh, basically make something, show people that you made it, and then do it again. It seems really, really simple, but oftentimes um, we get caught up uh, and we don't do it. We think, oh. Uh, I have to make the perfect first record. It has to have these famous people on it, and it has to have this much publicity and this much promotion. We kind of build these things up in our heads, uh, as young artists in particular, uh, build them up to this monolithic thing, and then we, then we never do it. And a lot of people, uh, students, former students of mine that I've been encouraging to keep doing it, keep doing it, and now we can go back and hear that evolution through time. So uh, if you are an artist, I think it's important to start documenting as soon as you can what you're working on, so that people can go back later and check out uh, what, you've been, what you've been up to. So, who is this relevant for? Uh, basically, it's anyone that wants to build an audience, wants to connect with people. Uh, want, you could be trying to get more gigs, get more performances, teach clinics, master classes, uh, trying to build your portfolio, maybe you're trying to get tenure at a university. All of these kinds of things uh, happen to fall under, for me at least, kind of the overall structure of this idea of create, connect, and repeat. So in 2020, and for the, I've been saying this for the last five years, uh, everyone knows that content is king. Uh, whatever platforms you're on, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, uh, we have to make stuff that exists in the place where people are putting their attention. So uh, we have to decide, we sometimes as artists, we think, oh, our music is so important, and of course it is to us, but to everyone else, it's just another thing out there. We have to know that uh, not everyone connects with our stuff as instantaneously as we might hope, and we have to keep putting stuff out, and that our music is our content, and that's how people can connect with us. So for artists, it's kind of everything uh, that we could do, you know, different types of things. We're gonna go through more of a content strategy in a little while, but uh, just off, of, off the cuff, it could be albums and singles, by the way, I have a single that came out today. If you're interested, go to Spotify. That's a small commercial. Uh, you can also make videos of that single. Oh, and there happens to be a video on YouTube of that exact single that just came out today. Uh, and then uh, we host um, outside of music podcasts that come out every single week. Uh, and then obviously we have our photos. We have your gig posters. You have sheet music that you can put up. Now you can screen record your uh, Sibelius or finale file playing across so you can be like, check out my slick trombone voicings that are too hard to play. <laughs> and then uh, you can make educational materials, uh, books, uh, etc. Kind of those are all, at least for me, jazz education related content ideas. So when we're trying to think about developing a content strategy, uh, when we're talking with new artists, going through artist development, kind of the Things that we talk about and have them focus on is trying to develop these three things. A brand voice, a brand feel, and consistency. And so that maybe seems like an esoteric thing, maybe too businessy or too many buzzwords. But really all that we mean by that is we want to have pages that feel consistent across platforms because that is you. You are your brand. And whether you want to use the word brand or not, you uh, have a visual identity. You look a certain way. You dress a certain way. You talk a certain way you're going to come across a certain way. And if you, you decide that you're not going to be flashy, or you're not going to do this, or you're not going to do that, you're still making a decision 
uh, to not participate in these kind of things. And everyone else will decide for you what your brand is, what it looks like, and uh, if it looks the same, feels the same across platforms. So we're trying to write in a way on Facebook, um, Instagram, etc. We're trying to use consistent filters. We're trying to use consistent look. You know, deciding are you going to dress and wear a suit? Are you going to wear jeans and sneakers? Are you going to wear gym clothes? Whatever it is, just be conscientious of the choices that you're making, whether you're a performer or an educator or some combination of everything. So uh, we have some like content categories. We're talking about those kind of specific things, but there's these overarching kind of concepts uh, of basically you can boil it down to it's either an educational piece of content, it's entertaining, or it's like inspirational. You you watch it because it inspires you. So um, let's see. What what app are you on on your phone right now? Taking notes. Great. So if you were to close that, the session was over. What's the first app you would open up after? Instagram. Okay. So on Instagram, what's what are some of your favorite pages on Instagram? Who do you follow? Matt Wilson. Why do you follow Matt Wilson? You like his drumming. You like his music, right? So Matt's posting stuff that's fun, right? He's posting stuff that's entertaining. He posts educational information. Sometimes he's playing, and you're getting inspiration from it, or you're getting education from it. So a lot of times content can have more than one thing, but sometimes uh, it could be one part of this. So for, for example, for myself, uh, maybe I'll post uh, a video of me playing one of my tunes. Maybe it's the single from today that you could go stream on Spotify. <laughs> it could be uh, videos. I make edu educational videos and try to post those every week. So maybe it's that, and then maybe it's talking about some concepts that I feel are important uh, to try to inspire young students to make stuff, put it out into the world, and start the career journey uh, now, rather than waiting until they get done with school. So you can kind of think about, you know, if you were to open up your phone and look at the people that you're following, what types of things are they putting out? And this is across genres, it's not just jazz, this is just content in general. What are people putting out? What do you want to put out? And how can you uh, use that to, to build and say the things that you want to say to build your brand uh, around those things? So some things that people do that sometimes we try to steer them away from is uh, this idea of not being consistent. Right? That was on the last slide. They, uh, consistency is so important for algorithms on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, etc. You have to be consistent, especially if you're trying to put videos out on YouTube you need to have some sort of schedule. So I know that seems uh, daunting, but I find it that if you actually schedule it into your day, it's actually a lot easier to do. I think about it as part of my job is to create that content and to put it up. I don't think, well, what am I gonna post on Instagram today? I'm like, no, I know that today I put out a single, so I'm gonna put out the album cover of the single, I'm gonna put a video out. I'll probably say something, I might live stream a session that I'm talking at a gym, and then I'm going to try to tell all, everyone to go listen to it so that Spotify can start generating more uh, interest in my track so that when the album comes out in a month, that it reminds all the people that listen to that single today that, hey, Nick put out a new album. So try to get that consistency. Put stuff out again and again so people grow your audience one person at a time. So you just get bigger and bigger and bigger circles. So some other things uh, is people don't have a consistent look or feel to their page. Um, Sometimes it's just random, sometimes it's like three cat videos, and then a trombone video, and then something about surfing, and it's like, okay, like that's nice, but if you're trying to build a brand, trying to use it for a business purpose, or an educational purpose, or something related to career, maybe start to think about putting some of that personal stuff into a place uh, that's not in the same place as your professional stuff. So maybe it goes on Instagram, for example, into the stories. I post things on the stories uh, about my day, or about my dog, but on the actual feed, I keep it to things that are related to my career, related to these types of content. And you know, I didn't know that I had been so effective in this until last semester. I played a recital, my faculty recital at UNT, and the TAs, TFs, came up to me after the concert. They're like, yeah, you know, we, we usually, for the teachers, we always you know, get, get a gift after the recital. But we looked through all your social media, and we couldn't find one thing that you liked. It was all trombone stuff. 
And I was like, oh, I guess I did a pretty good job of separating those two. So maybe that's like a very extreme example. But for me, I schedule things in. I try to make sure I know what's coming out in advance. Uh, a couple other things is content frequency, not enough posting, people post one time, then they'll wait a month when they have another gig, and they'll post about that gig, and they'll wait another month, and then they have a cool video coming out, so they'll post. And the thing is that you have to keep posting for your audience, or else they'll forget that you're there. And then every time they do see your content, they're gonna be like, this guy's just trying to sell me something again. He's trying to tell me about his gig again. And so, for me, it's just about making the percentage of the posts that you put out that are asking people to take an action uh, is very small relative to all the other stuff you're putting out. So if it's educational or performance oriented, and then when your book comes out after six months, you have that little bit of authority to ask and just say, hey, I know you guys have been here checking out all this other stuff. Hopefully you've gotten value from it. And now maybe you could go check out this book. But you wanna ask less times than just, hey, come to my gig, 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 hey, come to my gig. <sighs> if it was a real conversation, nobody would want to have that conversation. So we try to remind our artists uh, to think about that when, they're, when they are posting and come up with their posting strategies. So this is kind of an example of what I would say when someone says, okay, I want to put out my first album and I want to work with you, my company, outside of music, and so what should I do? And I say, okay, well, we're gonna not just put out an album, we're gonna do a whole content uh, system here. So what we're gonna do during the whole time is kind of document the journey. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna tell everybody from day one what the project's about, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna do videos about the concept development, writing the music, kind of the pre-production, like who's gonna be on the record? Why did you pick that drummer? Why do you want Matt Wilson to be there uh, and not somebody else, you know, which, then that brainstorming time leads to the day of the session, right? So on a session, whenever I'm producing a session, I'm like, okay, we're gonna do the audio, obviously, but uh, you need to record video of the session. I'm sorry, it's 2020. If you don't video your session, you're not really participating in the industry uh, that exists now. And I get, it. I get it, people don't feel like they wanna make a video, they don't feel like they got into music for making videos, but People are visual, and you want to show them what you're doing if you want to be an artist now. Um, I think some people can be successful without it, but most of us who are starting from you know, ground zero and trying to build up, I'd say participate where people are paying attention. And that means on their phones. So what do they have on their phones? Uh, pictures and videos, right? Uh, you gotta compete with the cats, you know? Grumpy cat is hard to beat. So on the day of the session, we're gonna record video. We're gonna record the musicians talking about the session, talking about being there. And even if you don't use it, it's important to get that uh, stuff so you have it to document that journey. And it can become a lot of different types of content later, either for Instagram as little clips, TikTok or little clips, or it could end up being long form videos on YouTube. So we take that, we do the session, we documented our journey, and that leads to us getting booking materials together, get, to gigs, we make the live videos of the gigs. We make educational materials based on the tunes that we wrote. For example, maybe you write a tune that's all about the modes of melodic minor, and then you can re create educational content. You're like, look, I wrote this tune. I thought melodic minor modes were really hard, but then I practiced this tune that I wrote to practice it, melodic minor modes. And now I'm a master of melodic minor modes. So you can take that and as use it as an exercise, create those materials. Then not only do you have your album to sell, but maybe you have PDFs of the charts. You have educational materials, which become a book, which becomes master classes, which becomes videos of the master classes, which becomes maybe presenting at a conference, and then you have more stuff, right? So this is just this idea of constantly thinking about this circle of um, content generation and sharing, and that's why I say that create, connect, and repeat. You know, podcasts and interviews of radio, uh, a lot of times people have a really difficult time talking about their music, talking about their project. They say, my album will speak for itself. <laughs> I have to say that 90% of the albums that I hear do not speak for themselves. And even though the music could be really great, it's augmented even better by having a great story behind it. And it doesn't need to be a super, um, super complicated story. It doesn't need, it just needs some kind of hook, some kind of 
idea behind it. What it's like when someone comes and says, this is just a bunch of songs that I really like and I put it together. It's like, that's great, uh, but what else? What else can we say? What narrative can we draw uh, out of it? Sometimes we do that afterwards, right? You don't have to have the whole concept when you go into the studio. Sometimes afterwards is when we kind of piece all that stuff together and uh, make that concept. So getting able to talk about your music so you can be coherent on a podcast, on an interview, and uh, get used to just speaking about your music in addition to playing. So that's what we're talking about, documenting the journey, the audio, video, written stuff, images. Um, so let's just stop for one second and say, you know, like we started talking about at the beginning, you know, a lot of times we put things on a pedestal. Or sometimes, I mean, some of you are in here, I'm sure, are music educators, and you're like, well, what the heck does this have to do with me? I'm not going to do any of this stuff. I'm not trying to make an album. You know, so I think our job as educators is to inspire as many young people as we can, connect them with this music. And uh, the places where we can do that are the places uh, in someone's phone. And, I, and it's like, we don't have to like that that's where the attention is, but the attention really is in the apps that are on your phone. And so we need to find ways to connect with people in those platforms. So that means you can't speak for 20 minutes about the topic. You have to figure out how to speak about it for one minute and be engaging. And just because you don't feel like that's how it should be does not mean that that's not how it is. And you're going to get a sound bite. You're going to get a YouTube video. You're going to get an Instagram story, which is 15 seconds. How are you going to come up with something in 15 seconds that can capture somebody's attention? And the good thing is, our Instagram story, that disappears in, fifth, in one day. So even if it sucked, you can just try again the next day with something else. And nobody will remember 99% of the time. Sometimes a student will screenshot something and be like, what is this? And they're like, oh, never mind about that. <clears throat> but uh, so just to say, uh, even if you're an educator, you know, is it that you're trying to maybe document the students in your program to, to, to build up your program to get more people involved? Maybe you're trying to share your teaching philosophy or things that you think, you know, I, constantly it's like, well, these people don't know anything about jazz. Well, why don't we tell people how to teach jazz? That's a kind of a thing that comes up a lot. Or like, oh, my degree program did not include jazz training. Well, there's a lot of us here that could very easily give us a few tips to people that will have to teach. Uh, jazz that didn't have that jazz background. So getting in a position where we're just sharing and we're just trying to help people to understand what we're doing and educate them. Because sometimes we, again, put this on a pedestal. Like everybody needs to go study uh, the music at the highest level. It's like, well, no, sometimes people need to engage with it on a kind of more basic level. They just didn't have a chance to. So we try not to be in our ivory tower, or at least I try to come down from it so we can share the music. Because that's what it's about. Thing. So uh, maybe you're not trying to make content about your music, but you want to provide the inspiration that will get other educators to come and participate in your festival, trying to get people to, uh, to submit uh, for adjudications and all that kind of thing. So for young musicians, you know, we launched at Outside Music a specific label kind of imprint called Next Level that is specifically designed to go through what we were just talking about, uh, kind of a step-by-step -step kind of guided experience. Um, trying to get people to make the content, start doing it now while they're in school, and um, make sure that uh, they, they don't wait. Like I said, you have to start. It takes a long time to get to where we're trying to get to. I thought I could beat the curve. I could not beat the curve. Uh, and I'm a really impatient person. I'm always kind of go, 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 go. And it just takes time for people to see your ideas multiple times and then finally engage with them. Uh, so this idea of this next level label is to get young artists who are starting their journey and get them into this beginning of this loop so they can document it and look back in 75 or 80 years and be like, man, I'm proud of that. It wasn't my best record, but that's what I was dealing with then, at that time. And uh, so that's what we're doing uh, at Outside of Music with for young artists. Uh, so if any of you are out there, feel free to get in touch and we can kind of take it from there. But uh, we just have a few minutes left, so in closing, I just want to say that uh, first of all, I want all of you to feel my gratitude for coming to this session. I really do appreciate it. And uh, we hope, I hope, that this will inspire you to take some small amount of action. Uh, maybe it's getting together with a friend and listening to recordings. Maybe it's 
creating a podcast where you can just talk about the things that you're practicing or the educational uh, ideas that you feel need to be in the world more. Uh, I hope you'll start to build your audience. We'll start to branch out inside of jazz. We'll stop complaining that we're losing audience and we'll start to work to build more audience. Uh, I think you know, most people are open to the idea of listening to jazz. They just think that they don't understand it. So trying to approach people in, in a way uh, where they can understand it. And uh, stop putting all of your energy into one thing and just start to focus on the process. Start to focus on the long game, because it's not for albums. I say it's not, it's not about one album, it's about 10 albums. It's not your first album, it's the journey through those albums that's going to define your career. And so putting one thing on the pedestal uh, is not the way to go, in my opinion. So focus on the process, to focus on uh, getting better, just like when we're practicing every day. So I think everybody knows how that works and just try to apply that uh, to our careers. So if you want to stay in touch, you can find, find me and find the, the company on the internet. If you take a picture of that fancy little square there, it'll take you to the website. Um, in our last couple of minutes, we just have uh, like two or three. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. Uh, I use all of the things. Uh, I have, that, that this is my company, that's the Instagram handle for my company, that's the website. I have my own website, I put everything out on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, et cetera, et cetera. Website, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, uh, Twitter. I mean, at this point, I have a team that helps me with all that stuff, but for a long time, it's been just post, 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 yes. Do you think albums are still yes. meaningful, or is it going to be more about videos, singles, smaller, digestible things? And what do you think about the future of the album and nine songs? Uh, I have this conversation a lot, and I uh, think about it a lot myself. I think as an artist, it's important to think in albums, because I think that uh, helps you chunk things together. It helps you come up with a concept. It helps you come up with an idea to, like, for this time in my life, I'm thinking about this musical idea. Uh, so I think in the creation side, I think about albums, but then while I'm thinking about the album, I also think about how people are gonna consume it at the end. So, for example, you know, I, uh, the album that's coming out is kind of a through composed piece, but I, it's made up of 14 tracks that are five minutes or less, so that it can be digested either on the radio or Spotify in smaller chunks, because I know that that's how it's gonna be consumed. It's not gonna be listened to all the way through uh, by one person. So uh, I encourage the artists to do singles and albums and because the usual 18 month turnaround time is too slow. You need to get in front of people every couple of months. So I try to uh, encourage that. Whatever's gonna help you go the fastest, even if it's just a cover album of your favorite jazz standards that you release as singles. Uh, yes? Jazz on FM radio dead? No. I grew up in Rochester, New York, where there's a really amazing jazz FM radio station. Uh, jazz 90.1, and they uh, inspired me since I was a little kid, and I know that they're still there doing, doing that all the time. So no, I don't believe so. Uh, maybe in some How do you approach that then? That, that vehicle? The vehicle of radio? Yes. Um, I think the vehicle of radio now is more of an industry tool. I encourage my artists to do radio promotion because I think people in the industry look at the charts. I don't know how many people are listening to that radio, but... Uh, I think appearing on, on those charts is important for the industry to see your name. And so we, I think uh, doing it is important. Showing up in those places is important if you want to be a performing artist. Uh, and you basically just hire the best radio promoter that you can to get your stuff out there. Um, but that's not like a big income generating item regardless. Uh, it's always been a promotional tool to gain audience and to get people to come to your gigs. So. Uh, I think that's just as valuable as ever to be on the radio uh, to try to, if you're not there, then people don't know who you are. That's how I feel about it. That's why I say go on YouTube, go on Spotify, because if you're not there, people won't be able to discover you, in my opinion. Just my, one, one man's opinion. I think we have to wrap up. Yeah. We have to wrap up here, but I'll go out in the hall if anybody else has any other questions. I'd love to meet you. And I think Jay has some parting words. <laughs> Thank you, Nick.